This video will help you understand changes in enthalpy and entropy and how these can be used to predict whether a reaction will be spontaneous or not. Let's start by reviewing enthalpy change. Enthalpy change, or delta H, is the amount of heat released or absorbed in a reaction carried out at constant pressure. Most of the reactions done in chemistry take place at constant pressure. We'll start by looking at an endothermic reaction. In an endothermic reaction, enthalpy change, or delta H, is positive. An example could be the reaction A plus B gives C, and delta H written beside the equation, with a value of positive 45 kilojoules. Another way of identifying an endothermic reaction is the reaction is written with the heat term on the left side. An example could be A plus B plus 45 kilojoules gives C. This tells us that for every mole of A reacted, 45 kilojoules of heat is absorbed from the surroundings. The potential energy diagram for an endothermic reaction looks like this. The energy difference between the reactants and the products is delta H. We'll use this example in which delta H is positive 45 kilojoules. Notice when delta H is positive, the energy of the products is higher than that of the reactants. Now we'll look at an exothermic reaction. In an exothermic reaction, delta H is negative. An example could be the reaction X plus Y gives Z, and delta H is negative 36 kilojoules. Another way to identify an exothermic reaction is when the heat term is written on the right side. An example would be X plus Y gives Z plus 36 kilojoules. Because the 36 kilojoules is on the right side of the equation, it means that when one mole of X reacts, 36 kilojoules of heat is released to the surroundings. Therefore, the reaction is exothermic. The potential energy diagram for an exothermic reaction looks like this. Notice the products have lower energy than the reactants. The energy difference between the reactants and products is delta H. In this example, it's negative 36 kilojoules. Think of a coconut in a tree. If it's released, there's a natural tendency for it to fall downward. It falls downward in order to reach a state of minimum gravitational potential energy. In a gravitational field, there's a natural tendency for objects to reach a state of minimum potential energy. Now consider a chemical system. There's a natural tendency for chemical systems to reach a state of minimum enthalpy. We could also express this by stating that there's a natural tendency for the enthalpy of a chemical system to decrease, just like there's a natural tendency for objects to fall downward in a gravitational field. Yet another way to state the same thing would be to say that equilibrium tends to favor a state of minimum enthalpy. Let's focus on an endothermic reaction. The potential energy diagram for an endothermic reaction looks like this. Delta H is positive and the products have more potential energy than the reactants. The potential energy of a chemical system is closely related to its enthalpy. If we change the title of the axis from potential energy to enthalpy, the graph will have the same shape. The reactants are lower in enthalpy than the products, so we can say that the reactants have minimum enthalpy. And we can generalize and state that in any endothermic reaction, the reactants have minimum enthalpy. Also, we recently learned that equilibrium tends to favor a state of minimum enthalpy. So if just enthalpy is considered, in an endothermic reaction, equilibrium tends to favor the reactants. Now let's consider an exothermic reaction. The potential energy or enthalpy diagram for an exothermic reaction looks like this. Notice the products have lower enthalpy than the reactants, and delta H is negative. Notice that in this case, the products have minimum enthalpy. So we can state that in an exothermic reaction, the products have minimum enthalpy. And since equilibrium tends to favor a state of minimum enthalpy, when only enthalpy is considered, equilibrium tends to favor products. As an example, consider the following reaction. H2 plus F2 gives 2HF, and delta H equals negative 537 kilojoules. The question asks if the tendency toward minimum enthalpy favors the reactants or the products. 
Because the delta H is shown and its sign is negative, it means the reaction is exothermic. So if we sketch an enthalpy diagram, it would have this shape. And the products are lower on the graph, so the products have minimum enthalpy. Or we can say the tendency toward minimum enthalpy favors the products. Since equilibrium favors a state of minimum enthalpy, it can also be stated that the equilibrium will tend to favor reactions in which enthalpy is decreasing. You can see by looking on the yellow line that as the reaction proceeds in the forward direction, there's an overall net decrease in the enthalpy. So this is a favorable change. Here's another example. Given this equation, will minimum enthalpy favor reactants or products? The heat term is on the left side of the equation, so this means the reaction is endothermic. So we can sketch an enthalpy diagram for an endothermic reaction, and it looks like this. In an endothermic reaction, the reactants have minimum enthalpy. So we can say that the tendency toward minimum enthalpy favors the reactants. Now enthalpy is not the only factor that affects equilibrium. There's another factor, and it's called entropy. Entropy means disorder or randomness. Let's compare the entropy of different phases of matter. Solids are very ordered, as you can see by this image, a part of a crystalline solid. The particles are all in neat rows, and they do not move past one another. Because solids have a high degree of order, we can say that they have a very low amount of disorder. Therefore, they have low entropy. Liquids are a little less ordered than solids. The particles are still close together, but they're not lined up in even rows like they are in a solid, and in a liquid, particles can move past one another freely. Since liquids are less ordered than solids, they have more disorder or more entropy. Aqueous solutions are not pure substances, they are mixtures. Like a liquid, the particles of an aqueous solution can move freely past one another. Because an aqueous solution contains more than one type of particle, it is more disordered than a pure liquid. Therefore, we can say that aqueous solutions have more entropy than pure liquids. In a gas, the particles are quite far apart. They are spread out through a large volume. They're also moving much faster than the particles in liquids or solids, and they move in a totally random or disorganized fashion. This means that gases have the highest entropy of all the phases. So we can summarize by saying that the entropy increases as we go from a solid to a liquid to an aqueous solution and finally to a gas. It's important to remember this. Now if there's a different number of gas particles or molecules on each side of an equation, there will also be a difference in entropy. If we go from having less gas particles to having more gas particles in the same volume, then we would be increasing the entropy. The side with the higher number of gas particles or molecules in a balanced equation has the greater entropy. So if the product has more gas molecules, entropy is increasing as the reaction proceeds forward. If the reactants have more gas particles, the reactant side will have the greater entropy and entropy will increase as the reverse reaction occurs. Let's look at this reaction. Coefficients in a balanced equation can represent moles. So there is one mole of gas on the reactant side and two moles of gas on the product side. So in this reaction, the products have greater entropy than the reactants, or we can say that products have maximum entropy. We can also say that entropy is increasing as the forward reaction proceeds. Here's another example. There are four moles of gas on the left, or reactant side, and two moles of gas on the right, or product side. In this reaction, the reactants have higher entropy or maximum entropy. We can also say that entropy increases as the reverse reaction occurs. Or we could say that entropy is decreasing as the forward reaction occurs. Remember a while ago we had said there's a natural tendency for a system to reach a state of minimum enthalpy. Now we'll talk about entropy or disorder. There's also a natural tendency for systems to reach a state of maximum entropy. Looking at both of these tendencies, the tendency toward minimum enthalpy which we can call minimum H, and the tendency toward maximum entropy, which we can call maximum S, as S is the symbol chemists use for entropy, help determine what will actually happen when reactants are mixed together. Let's have a look at the possibilities. 
If the tendency toward minimum enthalpy favors reactants, and the tendency toward maximum entropy also favors reactants, then there's no reason for a reaction to move away from the reactants, and when reactants are mixed, no reaction will occur. If minimum enthalpy favors products, and maximum entropy also favors products, then the reactants will react completely and form products. So we can say that when the reactants are mixed, the reaction goes to completion. Now if minimum enthalpy favors products, and maximum entropy favors reactants, then the reaction will reach a state of equilibrium when the reactants are mixed. If minimum enthalpy favors reactants, and maximum entropy favors products, the reaction again will reach a state of equilibrium when the reactants are mixed. In an equilibrium state, there will be a mixture of reactants and products present. We can summarize these statements in a simple table. If both minimum enthalpy and maximum entropy favor the reactants, there's no reaction. And since nothing happens when the reactants are mixed, this reaction is said to be non-spontaneous. When minimum enthalpy favors reactants and maximum entropy favors products, when reactants are mixed, they will react and reach a state of equilibrium. So since a reaction does occur, at least to a certain extent, this reaction would be spontaneous. When minimum enthalpy favors products and maximum entropy favors reactants, when reactants are mixed, they will again react and reach a state of equilibrium. And since a reaction does occur, this reaction is spontaneous. Now when both minimum enthalpy and maximum entropy favor the products, when the reactants are mixed, they will keep reacting until all of the reactants have been converted to products. In this way, we say the reaction has gone to completion. So this reaction is certainly spontaneous.